guys, this is Carrie Fullerton Professional Organizing. Now today we're talking about uh, Beatrice, and I cannot pronounce her last name. Um, the It's spelled N-A-U-J-A-L-Y-T-E. And she is from the Bliss Bean Productivity is what we're talking about today. Now, she says, I run the Productivity, Self-Care, and Personal Development blog and YouTube channel called The Bliss Bean. So I really strongly believe that practicing self-care does not mean that you are sacrificing productivity. So her take on self-care is a little different than what we hear most people talk about. Um, I believe self-care is a clean home. Self-care is being organized. And she uh, it gives us a lot of ideas of how self-care can make you more productive at every part of every area of your life because if you're more productive then um, you can also make time for family friends and um, fun and uh, it's very interesting what I'm going to talk to you about um, her take on self-care um, the first thing she talks about is focus on practical habits. She says the bliss being is practical habits. So how do you structure your day? How do you prioritize? How do you use your time? How do you take care of your health in a way that's going to prevent burnout? And that's the key. Preventing burnout, um, you know, you take time for yourself, take, but take time for your friends and your family and how to focus on extreme pro productivity at the same time. Um, let's see. How do you take care of your health in a way that's going to prevent burnout, keep your energy up, and keep you feeling um, joyful? She says, I want to talk about the seven different techniques that will help you structure your day and your work in a way that allows you to take care of yourself and be more productive, which is what we all want, right? Now, some of the things she's going to talk about, like we're going to talk about her morning routine. Now, that morning routine is what she does I don't think I could ever do this and you'll find out why, but, but her ideas are still very valid, very valid. And you can tailor your morning routine to fit your life. And if you want to incorporate her ideas and that works for you, that is great too. Um, but You'll find out in just a moment what I'm talking about. Uh, so the first technique, uh, designing and implementing routine. So the first technique that I, uh, Beatrice talks about is designing and implementing routines in your life. Yes, I think that is very important. Uh, I, she says she's a very big believer in the power of routines. Living a balanced life full of good healthy, productive habits is a lot less about finding the discipline and the motivation to do that and more about simply setting up our lives in a way that makes those habits easy to accomplish. Now, let's see what she does. A morning routine. So, I want to walk you through my current morning routine. I think it's really helpful to wake up at a consistent time. Oh, I can do that. Not only does it start your day in a consistent way, but it always helps you to establish a more consistent bedtime. 
and that helps ensure you're getting enough sleep to do the work that you want to accomplish. And I have to add in, I've already read this, of course. Um, so a lot of these things that she's gonna talk about in this and we're gonna discuss in this can be used for people with attention deficit disorder as well. It's very, very, very helpful information. I really enjoyed um, what she has to say. So on most days, she wakes up at 5.30 a.m. Now, I'm not going to do that. As you know, I work from home, and so 5.30 just doesn't work for me. I do have a set time that I get up every morning and I do have somewhat of a consistent morning routine. Um, some days I don't stick to that routine, but for the most part I do. That's how I'm able to get on my uh, days where I am not organizing. I can get three or four podcasts out in a day um, to make up for the days that I'm working outside of the home. But um, she wakes up at 5.30 in the morning I'll, and she goes and fills up her water bottle. Then she puts in her contacts and goes and washes her face. Now I do, that is the first routine I do when I get up in the morning is I get up and wash my face. It tends to wake me up and get me going. Some people take a shower first thing in the morning. Um, but that's what she does. Um, after that, I like to incorporate just a little bit of exercise, nothing too intense. So usually I just listen to two songs. During the first song, I'll do stretches. And in the second song, she does a little ab routine to get her core fired up to start the day. Now that's something that I probably should start implementing every morning, even if it's just something little. Now, this is what I will never do. I would hate it way too much, but she does it. She finds it a challenge that she can overcome every morning and she feels accomplished when she does it, but I couldn't do this. After that, she takes a cold shower. I set the water as cold as it will go and I spend about 30 seconds in there. It is very refreshing, very energizing. I wash my face, I listen to the morning news on Google Home and then I sit down to journal. Um, all of those are great things that you can implement but I cannot do the cold shower and um, so you can take that part with a grain of salt, but I'm sure it wakes you up and energizes you. I am sure it does everything that she says it does. Now, after journaling, she says, I take a look at my to-do list and my calendar. I like to rearrange my to-do list in the order that I plan to do it on my calendar. I block out my day, which is a technique that we talk about later, uh, and I go down and then she goes down for breakfast. So she gets that done first. Uh, she eats breakfast while listening to a podcast and then she takes a 15 minute walk outside. Now her morning routine though takes 45 minutes and then 45 minutes during breakfast to listen to that podcast. So maybe she works from home too and that you know, she's able to spend almost two hours doing her morning routine, or she gets that all done before she heads off to the office. But I'm sure I do know that when I did have to go, when I did have a retail job that I had to go to every morning, I did enjoy getting there 30 minutes early to sit and just drink my coffee and talk to coworkers before I started my day. That to me was a something that I never thought would help me feel the way I felt. And it was such a great way to start my day that I actually looked forward to my 30 minutes of sitting 
and drinking my coffee before I engaged in my uh, actual work. So um, these morning routines can really, they can really help you get productive. Um, so she does the podcasting. Um, she says, if you have stressful things going on during your day, you know that you have that time for yourself in the morning and it just makes it feel so much more manageable. Yeah, it just feels like you have time to breathe before you go into the stressful stuff. And then you know that you can start off each day that way. So taking that cold shower, it's challenging, she says. So taking that cold shower or doing those ab exercises is not the most pleasant thing to be doing first thing in the morning, but it is a little tiny challenge that gives her a sense of accomplishment. Uh, uh, it's like a tiny ant hill that I can climb in the morning that makes me feel like I can scale mountains for the rest of my day. And uh, some people believe making your bed is that small ant hill that you actually got one thing accomplished that day that made your room look nice and then at the end of the day you your nice neat bed welcomes you in that evening so um you know there are different things that you can incorporate into your life to get you through my morning routine is refreshing. After taking that cold shower, after moving around a little bit, I feel more refreshed, awake, and energized. And she also says her, her coffee helps uh, in that as well. Starting day with gratitude. She says, so starting my day with gratitude gets me into a positive mindset. And she also talks about scripting. She will put all of these um, goals. I don't, I don't even think sh she doesn't call them goals, but they're, um, she kind of plans out how she thinks her positive day is going to go. She's going to accomplish m many things that day. She's, it's, uh, she's going to have a peaceful day. You know, uh, I'm not sure what she actual writes, but, um, that is, what she does. She just kind of scripts out how she thinks, how she wants her day to go and tries to uh, move into that mindset. For me, that I think would be prayer. You know, I usually, when I have a, a new client, I usually pray that God will give me wisdom so that I can pick up on everything that the client needs and that I will fulfill those organizational needs that will help her the most. So uh, maybe that is a little bit of what she does. I'm not sure, but I always um, try to go to uh, prayer and ask, the Lord to uh, structure my day. Um, so that's how I would script. That's how I guess I relate to what she's saying. Um, so she's scripting allows me to decide how I want my day to go and planning out my day gives me a concrete plan of action that I can then act on. Yes, you know, when I was a teacher, I used to pray that I would have the students that God wanted me to have. So when I had challenging students, then I had to assume that those are students God put in my path for a reason and they were either to change me or we were gonna change together and through God, um, he was just gonna work out what needed to be worked out in me and in the student. Um, and we're talking about you know, three and four year olds. So we're not talking about big, <laughs> big, 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 big things. Um, but, but important things because you want to be able to teach your children, your students, even if they're challenging, you want them to learn what they need to learn for life. Um, so 
that is how I interpret what she um, does. And she try and you know, I would try to figure out, you know, what is it that God wants from me that day and try to um, live up to what God wants me to live up to that day. Um, but scripting allows her to decide on how she wants the day to go and planning out days gives me a concrete plan of action that I can act on. Um, and then easing into the day, she says, and finally, my morning routine just gives me some space between waking up and tackling work. Yeah, and that was what my 30 minutes of coffee uh, did. Now, maybe you do want to get up at first thing in the morning and get some writing done before you do anything else. But for me personally, and maybe for you, that space in the morning is really, really important. I'm not really ready to do any kind of work first thing in the morning. So I can take care of myself by giving myself some time to ease into it instead. All right, so she says, but if you don't currently have a morning routine, you should definitely start with some something very teeny, teeny, tiny. And she's just talking about, like I said, I wake up every morning and wash my face. I guess um, she talks about habit stacking. So habit stacking is a technique where you take a habit that you already have implemented into your life. You're, you've got it down pat, like washing your face. Uh, and new habits so that the new one, and then you can add a new habit. You've got it down pat and then you attach a new habit to that so that the new one then becomes easier and more automatic to implement. And that's how you can slowly start building your own morning routine. You know, you may go and uh, wash your face and brush your teeth and then you want to add on wipe down the mirror and wipe down the countertop. That's not something that she added in, but because I am talking about home organizational uh, stuff, that's what comes to my mind. She says, so maybe the first thing you do, because now she's talking more about adding habits to your morning routine. Uh, so maybe the first thing you do is to just wake up and you do some stretches first thing in the morning. Uh, I also had a friend, she um, wakes up and the first thing she does is read a devotional on her phone. And um, that is something that she does as a mo morning routine. Um, or maybe you want to wake up and just before you even get out of bed, say a little morning prayer. Now for me, when I go, my evening or nighttime routine is when I lay down and I'm ready to close my eyes and go to sleep. I pray myself to sleep. That is something now that is a trigger that just says, I'm going to sleep in peace and, um, and I'm able to speak to the Lord and just really, uh, pray myself to sleep. Um, it, it's just that making use of that time at night. Uh, maybe you do some meditation in the morning, prayer in the morning, then maybe you add on journaling and reading, whatever works for you. Um, routines, any time of the day. So having a routine to end your work day, for example, can be a really nice way to separate yourself from your work for the rest of the day, kind of wind down in the evening. So that's um, also a good um, thought. Um, maybe at lunchtime, take a walk every day to get some fresh air. Or maybe you can have a routine for starting your work day. So this is really nice way to switch your brain to work mode, but also to have something to look forward to. Even if you're not really looking forward to working, you can look forward to the little routine that you do before you start working. For example, the couple 30 minutes to just sit and 
drink a cup of coffee. Um, now, she also talks about the Pomodoro technique. The next technique I want to talk about is something that I talk a lot about on the Bliss Bean. It's time management technique called Pomodoro. Um, this was created in 1980s by Francisco Carrillo. Now, I don't know much about him. So, um, all I know is uh, when he was in college, he was looking for a way to break up his study time in a way that would leave him feeling refreshed and be able to get his studying done more productively. Now, this is why I say some of these ideas are great for ADHD because I tend to have ADHD and um, there are certain breaks that you can take that will keep you ready to tackle your work again and then there are breaks that will make you even more distracted and keep you from being productive. So I like what she says here about um, he used a simple kitchen timer and he would structure, came up with, he would focus 25 minutes a very focused, completely distraction-free working, followed by a five-minute break. Then you repeat that four times, or as needed, because, of course, you got to get your work done. And then the fourth break that you take is longer, maybe like 10 to 20 minutes, whatever feels right for you. These breaks, you know, and when you're at work and you have a morning 15 minute break and a morning uh, afternoon break of 15 minutes and then you just have a 30 minute lunch, maybe those breaks work intensely for 25 minutes and then just walk and go refill your coffee and come back or just walk around the office and come back and sit down. It doesn't even have to be a full five minutes, but just taking a break because you're going to have that 15 minute break later on during the day and uh, you'll have another one in the afternoon. So just get up and walk around. Go get a drink of water, eight ounces of water drink. Uh, sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze. This break, these breaks may be short, but they are very impactful. So 20, 25 minutes of work time plus five minutes of taking a break is so much more effective than 30 minutes of distracted multitasking. And if a five minute break every 25 minutes seems like a lot to you, you can definitely adjust these periods of time. So maybe you want to work for 15 minutes and then alternate that with 10 minute break. You know, that might work if you work from home, but that may not work too much at the office. Um, but maybe a little walk and then come back. Take regular breaks. The important thing is that you're just taking regular breaks. Whereas on the other hand, some better ways to spend a break or to get up from your desk, move around, get some fresh air, maybe do some mindless tasks like tidying up your desk, filling up your water bottle, going to talk to someone, but don't use it checking your emails or your um, Facebook or social media because that will distract you from the work that you're trying to go back to. Uh, she says, I don't really feel like taking a break. It's very important for me to get, uh, oh, wait. And so that really reinforced to me that even if I don't really feel like taking a break, it's very important for me to give myself some room to think. Um, because she was talking about sometimes you can focus on something so hard and then there's a problem that you can't solve and then you take a little break and then all of a sudden you come back and you realize, oh, and you're able to tackle um, whatever was giving you a hard time. Uh, time blocking 
now we're back to time blocking. All right, so the next technique, something I already mentioned very briefly, is something called time blocking. Time blocking is simply stretching out your schedule and figuring out how you're going to spend your day. With time blocking, you have a plan for when everything will get done and exactly how long it will take. Every morning, I look at my to-do list and adjust my schedule based on what I have to do that day. And she blocks out time to get it done. It's not a strict this during this time, this, 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 but you're gonna accomplish all of these things from the, the top part of your to-do list or the middle of your to-do list. And so the structure in place, with that structure in place, I know that I can get everything on my to-do list done because I've practiced this enough that I'm pretty good at estimating how long different projects will take. Now, adjusting your schedule. And even if something doesn't exactly go to plan, I can very easily go to my schedule and adjust. I can see how that change will affect the rest of the schedule and what I need to change to make sure I start on, stay on track, you know, and, you know, maybe there's something that's less important that can be tackled the next day. Um, but let's see what else she says. Even if you have a super busy packed schedule, it might be even more important because since you have a very limited amount of free time, you can use time blocking to really make sure that you get the most out of that free time that you do have. Uh, time blocking may not be the first thing that you think of when you think of self-care but by setting up those time limits, you are caring for yourself. You are making sure that you don't let your work spill over and fill up your entire day so that you have time left over, to, uh, entire day so that you don't have time left over to take care of yourself, spend time with your family and recharge your batteries. So those are things you have to block out as well. Um, um, now, this is not a big deal, but I used to never take time from work for uh, take time off from work for my birthday because at that time I taught three and four year olds and I just didn't think it was appropriate to disrupt their school day uh, for my birthday. But when I started working in retail, it was different. Um, well, plus. I, my position was a little different. I didn't have one of those positions where they had to fill it, uh, fill it or tasks uh, were gonna fall apart. Um, I was in sales. So um, if I took a day off, I took a day off um, for my birthday. Um, but I w would have to time block that in so that I would remember to take it, ask for it off in an appropriate amount of time. So, um, you know, time blocking is great for making time for friends and family and, um, your birthday. <laughs> now, deep work. She talks about deep work as immersive work. And she uh, talked about deep work by Cal Newport. Again, I have not read his work, so I'm not sure what, all, what it is all about, but he defines deep work as professional activity performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that pushes your cognitive capabilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate. Uh, so, she, uh, Beatrice views deep work as self-care because as Newport explains in the book, Deep work is just a lot more fulfilling and engaging 
than shallow work, and people who regularly make time for deep work tend to be happier. So if you end your work day and you realize that you've kind of just been doing busy work all day, you haven't really accomplished anything of substance, that's kind of a bummer. Whereas if you end the work day, you have good meaningful progress towards something important to show for it, you'll feel the sense of pride and accomplishment and feel more motivated to keep working towards your goal. Now that's why I like the organizing business because when I do go in and help someone accomplish something that is really, really needed for them to uh, focus on the rest of their, you know, it saves them time and stress. Uh, I feel accomplished at the end of the day. So if I take my birthday off, when I do take time off for my birthday, what I usually did was I did make time to get my nails done. I went and got a pedicure and manicure. But also in those days off, I also made sure I did some cleaning, deep cleaning at home that I not, don't typically have time to do. And it's those things that, you know, you get to accomplish those things that really bug you that you haven't had time to get done. And then you feel so accomplished even in your time off. I know that has nothing to do with being more productive at work, but it's just a great example of how you feel happier when you really can get something done. So if you end the work day and you realize, um, oh yeah, we already covered that. Uh, so if you, in the work day and you realize that you kind of just been doing busy work all day, you haven't really accomplished anything of substance, that's kind of a bummer. Whereas you end the work day and you have good, meaningful progress for something important to show for it, you'll feel the sense of pride and accomplishment and feel more motivated to keep working towards your goals. All right, yeah, I read that twice, but that's okay. Uh, four hours, per day of deep work. She, he says, if you, you know, you want to practice an hour a day because the max that you could probably do is four hours a day of undistracted work. Now, um, sometimes when I'm in a client's home, I schedule four hours of organizing and an hour lunch and four hours of organizing so that we really get things done. So it's very easy to get a habit like this going. It's just an hour a day. How can you set up your day so that you are consistently investing one hour of deep work per day into your goals? And then you can work up to four hours. I tend to be so focused on organizing that I sometimes even forget to check and see what time lunch is. Uh, sometimes I wind up not eating lunch or just drinking a protein shake during lunch. So I'm the type that I have to set a timer and separate myself from the work for an hour because the work just calls to me and I have a hard time separating myself. I'm, I'm the type that I have to get it all done at once and it's not possible to get it all done at once. So I have to force myself to take my lunches. Um, but that also just means I really find what I do fulfilling and I really do enjoy it. Um, so I don't have a problem there, but again, um, these are all goals to work on that will make you more productive and it is self-care because you do feel more fulfilling. All right, and now she talks about designing your work environment. Now this is 
this is definitely self-care. The first thing I want to talk about is designing your work environment. So a lot of the time you might be working on the go. You might be trying to squeeze in a little pockets of work time throughout the day, but as much as possible, how can you work in an environment that is really conductive to your well-being and thus also to your productivity? Uh, sit, she talks about sitting standing desks. So one of those things might be investing in a sitting standing desk so you can get one of those fancy desks or you can work at your kitchen counter where you can sit at, at a stool if you want to be sitting and then stand at the counter if you want to stand. Personally, I have used like a wooden board on top of a box on top of my desk that also works. It's just not great for you to be in one position for long periods of time. And me, I don't have problems with that in my work because I sit and do podcasts, but then I'll have days where I'm organizing someone's kitchen all day. Um, personally, I've used, uh, oh, hold on. Ideally, you want to switch. So set up a space where you can work both ways and start really paying attention to when you feel like sitting and when you feel like standing. Uh, be tuned into your body. She also says make workplace enjoyable. For me, it's also really important that my desk is clean and beautiful. So I really strive to keep it tidy, keep it minimal and organized because I know that that makes a huge difference in how I work and it just makes me happy. What would it, what would your work, would you like your work day to sound like? Do you like having some soft background music? Do you want just complete silence? What would it smell like? You can get an essential oil diffuser to make it smell nice and relaxing. It's just really worth that initial investment of time to really make your workspace a place where you enjoy working. And minimize distractions. You also want to minimize as much as possible the amount of distractions that are in your workspace. Distractions will kill your productivity, which is frustrating. So by eliminating distractions, we are also practicing self-care. We are protecting our time and our focus. And she talks about an internet blocker where you can block off um, your computer, uh, you know, any of those social media sites that are distracting, you can block those off while you're working. Um, but she also talks about you can, if you need to research something, um, you can, um, it says, so, the placeholder that you type in is the letters TK. And then when um, you have finished having that concentrated, immense work time, then you can go back and Google all the information that you need to Google and get all of that done at once so that you're not work, Google, work, Google, and you're not going back and forth. Just get all the outline done. And then on the things that you need to search and get more information on, you can all Google all of that at one time and fill in where you need to fill in. Um, she says, so then you can do all that fact checking, all that stuff statistics, finding all in one go, and it'll be a lot more efficient that way. Um, but blocking off all social media and all computer distractions to get real immense work done. Uh, and use do not disturb feature on your phone. Another thing you can do is put your phone in do not disturb because even the tiniest little buzz from your phone could interrupt your focus. Um, I do that at night so it doesn't interrupt my sleep because I hear all those little things on my phone all night and uh, it can keep me awake. Um, 
So you want to do whatever it takes to eliminate um, distractions. Okay. But you can set it up to where, um, you know, certain phone numbers can come in so that if it's an emergency, you don't miss the very important ones. And this is something that you really start to notice for yourself. Since you start practicing putting away your phone, you realize that if your phone is in your peripheral vision, that's another thing you can practice is just putting your phone in a drawer somewhere. Um, because if it's next to you on your desk, you really feel it's presence there and getting it out of the way just feels like removing a weight that allows you to focus better. Uh, keep track of your to-dos. Um, she says, so another thing you can do is take care of yourself and to be more productive is finding a system of keeping track of your to-do lists that works for you. Whether that is a bullet journal or just a checklist in your notes app or some powerful digital planning tool. It's worth taking the time to figure out something that really works well for you. Um, she also says, so you might schedule some time every Sunday to look over your to-do list, plan out your upcoming week, maybe capture all the ideas that you might have floating around in your head I say a brain dump on a to-do list. That's something really important that you can do for yourself to make sure that you start each week feeling calm and centered. Have some fun, energizing time. And lastly, find ways to spend your time that are just fun and energizing to you. It's like an investment of your time because of your just working, working, working all the time, you will get tired and you'll just become less effective at working. So you need to balance that out and make sure that you are also taking care of all the other buckets of your life. Exercise, that will help also. So for one, you can exercise. Exercise clears your mind and it could just be walking. It's good for your body. It makes you more productive when you come back to work. It's really just a win-win. And that doesn't necessarily mean going to the gym and doing some extraneous workout. All right, and then spend time with loved ones. Another thing you can do in your free time is schedule some time to spend with your loved ones. Spend some time with your friends and family. Enjoy a hobby. Um, now, another thing that she says to make sure that you're being productive where you really need to be productive and um, is time tracking. She says, so kind of a bonus strategy that I want to talk about is time tracking. Time tracking is where you track basically how you spend every single minute of your day and the reason I want to talk about this last is because I've been talk talking about a lot of different ways that you can spend your time. How to use self-care techniques in a way that will help you use your work time more efficiently. So this is an experiment that you can try for a week. Just track where all of your time goes for a week and then look at your results and decide what changes you can make moving forward to spend your time better. How are you going to reallocate your time for certain buckets to other buckets of your life? It'll show you where you're wasting too much time or where you're not spending enough time with friends and family uh, or in God's word or exercising or, you know, etc. Now, we, 21 days to productive flow. Beatrice says on her blog, she offers a mini course called 21 days to productive flow. 
you get a printable workbook as well as a daily email in your inbox and over those 21 days you'll be guided through incorporating those small powerful habits and changes into your life adapting them to fit your lifestyle and finding ways to make yourself more fulfilled and more productive and i will have all the links to her uh ways you can find out more about productivity and more about her i'll leave that at the end of this um all right now for a quick review of what we talked about uh just in case you missed anything she uh beatrice says see how productivity and self-care go hand in hand focus on practical habits and learn how do you structure your day? How do you prioritize? How do you use your time? How do you take care of your health in a way that goes to prevent burnout? Keep your energy up and keep your feeling happy. Living a balanced life full of good, healthy, productive habits is a lot less about finding the discipline and the motivation to do that and more about simply setting up your life in a way that makes those habits easy to accomplish. Uh, investing time into self-care doesn't mean that you are taking away from your productive work hours. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Beatrice says a morning routine gives you some space between waking up and tackling work, allowing you to ease into your day. You can slowly build your morning routine by habit stacking. This is a technique where you take a habit that's already implemented into your life. You've got it down pat and then you attach a new habit to that so that the new one then becomes easier and more automatic to implement. Incorporate the Pomodoro technique into your day, and that is 25 minutes of focused work and then a small break, 25 minutes, small break, four times, and then you know, take a 15 to 25 minute, 15 to 20 minute break after you've done that four times. Uh, 25 minutes of very focused, completely distraction free work, followed by a five minute break. Repeat that throughout the day. Find ways to spend your time that are just fun and energizing to you. If you're just working all the time you will get tired and you'll just become less effective at work she says implement a morning routine that starts by waking up at a consistent time each day incorporate a walk or a little exercise every morning do a little journal journaling and look at your to-do list for the day and eat some breakfast it doesn't have to be a big breakfast, just eat something. In addition to a morning routine, also have an evening routine and maybe even a middle of the day routine. Learn how to time block. Every morning, look at your to-do list and adjust your schedule based on what you have to do that day. Practice deep work where you are performing and activity in a state of distraction-free concentration that pushes your cognitive capabilities to their limit. And last, minimize distractions in your workplace as much as possible. Put your phone on Do Not Disturb and keep it out of sight. All right, these are great ways to stay productive and productivity is a great way to self-care because then the free time you have is actual free time and not spent thinking about work. All right, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, share with your friends. 
give me a recommendation uh, on my blog, on the um, podcast, and um, I will see you on the next podcast. Thank you again.